I, I am, however, very happy to hear that my cats were the, not the only cats who, despite having all the toys, prefer garbage. You see this? Nine. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Nine. See that there? That that big that that's a bite taken out. Of it. There's there's a bite there. There's little teeth marks there. One of the primary functions of a pet owner is to keep the little la la. from killing themselves. And they don't make it easy. They try real hard to make sure you fail. Peggy loves chewing on plastic. Simba loves licking tape. Valkyrie loves, since we have closed away all the toilet paper and paper towels, she goes through the garbage and pulls out paper towels. Um, Dottie likes pretty much any kind of garbage that makes a crinkly sound. So God forbid, like if I eat a granola bar and put the wrapper down for a minute before I throw it away, Dottie will abscond with the wrapper. I, it's, we're, it, we're pretty sure Dottie's half raccoon on her father's side, though. She's half trash panda. Ugh. Nine. All right. Yeah, it's it's so yeah. Grady is going to be six. I forget if it's the fourth of the night. I think it's September night. We having a party? No. Why would we have a party? Because it's his birthday. He doesn't know what the night party is. I mean, he's a vital part of the show. You spend like a quarter of the show every week just like cradling that cat aggressively at the camera. <laughs> I think we could stick a candle in a can of tuna. Do you know what I've, I've, I've... A fake candle, so he doesn't, like, burn off his whiskers. Because cats are dumb. If I try to eat anything out of a can, I have to go outside <laughs> to open it. Because <laughs> he thinks it's wet food? Because, it, no, he thinks it's tuna. He doesn't like wet food. The only thing he likes is Nine. tuna. Anything in a can is tuna. With us, it's Ziploc bags. Anything in a Ziploc bag has got to be temptations. So anytime we open up the shredded cheese, I have to actually let Peggy sniff it mm -hmm. in order to get her to leave me alone. And then she's offended that it's not <sighs> temptations. All right. Well, that, yeah, that's six years, though. It's, just, it's so weird. I can't. It's been that long. Yeah. He's, been... He's a good boy. He is. He's a big, wonderful, floofy boy. Wanders around the house screaming at us all day. Yeah, so does Simba. All right. Well, with that having been done, let's uh, actually attempt to do the nonsense this week. We've got an interesting assortment, and we uh, surprisingly enough, the, the the hurricane is barely even passed, and we have hurricane bullshit already. Here we go. Each week, <laughs> Catherine, yeah, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" and um. Yeah, this comes to us from uh, from New Orleans. New Orleans. I one of the things that stuck with me about hurricanes that I was told very I'm you know what I'm pretty sure it's a misnomer, but it was told to me at a young age, and that was in a hurricane, the wind is is going by so fast that a piece of straw can embed itself in a tree. Is it true? I don't know. I honestly I actually don't know if that's true or not. But the point here is... That sounds like something out of a martial arts movie. The point is, being told that at a young age, living southeast as I do, that stuck with me. And that, that is informed, what true or not, that has informed all of my decisions 
or in and around hurricane preparations. Fair. That having been said, I really don't think that someone has been told a piece of straw can penetrate you in a hurricane. True or not, I, 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 you know how I know they, they were not given this, po this little nugget of information? Because here he is, buck fucking naked in a goddamn hurricane. Many desperately tried to escape the severity of Hurricane Ida in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Blocks, and other areas of the Gulf Coast. Still, there are some people who are hunkering down, hoping to make the storm. One man in particular approached the early part of the storm in his birthday suit, though he was wearing shoes. That's cheating. Uh, the man appeared not to be wearing any clothes while passengers filmed his activities. The man crossed the street and walked behind a large delivery truck parked on the sidewalk against the building. Do we have, yeah, that, yeah, I can't really play the video because, well, they, there's... Naked guy. Yeah. Uh, the video appears to show the naked man being yelled at by a woman standing on the pavement. She was pointing, apparently telling the man to get away. Okay, so being naked in public is rarely a good plan. Rarely. Yeah. I, I'm sure there are some. There, there's always someone in the comments, and I'm sure they'll be in the comments saying there's some special circumstance where being naked in public is perfectly acceptable, nay, preferable. I'm sure they will all tell My us about. My aunt's them. cousin's college roommate sister had to be naked at the store one day <laughs> because she was allergic to fabric. It'll happen. However. It's true. Straws fired from a shotgun can do it. Okay, so apparently this is true. Straw can be embedded in a tree with a strong enough wind. And and her Ida was a category four coming on through. That means this dude wins that strong. You're risking your dick. I mean, to be fair, how much straw is there in New Orleans? Pine straw. There's plenty of it. Just like laying around the city streets. Yes. So... Do you know how many pine trees really? are fucking down here? <laughs> They're like weeds. We got pine okay. trees coming out of our asses in the southeast. I'm just sitting here thinking I'm not going on a hayride ever again. <laughs> I, early on in man's development, you know what? Do you know why we came up with the loincloth in the first place? It had nothing to cover the really sensitive bits right it had nothing to do with modesty not a damn thing it was because we as a species were walking through the brambles and the woods and all of the the, the nature sharp pointy things and they kept getting in our dicks and our junk and we didn't like it so we're like hey one was, dude hmm? there was there was apparently a plant when dan was in the army that they called the jesus christ bushes <laughs> yeah because when you had to walk around at night with low lights, they had very sharp spines, and that's all you could hear in the pitch black. You just hear somebody go, Jesus Christ! There, there was one very famous man or woman, or, or whichever, I don't know what it was, but way back in the olden times, in the early days of humanity, some hero realized that if you take this thing and wrap it around, it will stop the things from poking into your junk. And that that person lived like a god for the rest of their life, just from that one tiny little discovery. If you take the thing that makes the sheep floofy and you cover your junk with it, <laughs> your junk won't get that, stabbed as much. That dude was like, back then, that, that dude was like the guy who discovered flex tape. Okay? Yeah. That, that's how big a deal that was. So. That's like Billy Mays' ancestor. Exactly. Shamwow for your dick. Um, oh, don't come on st stupid contrast. Thing. Anyway, so yeah, don't walk around. What are you fucking thinking? Yeah, like there's going to be flying debris and uh, really dirty water and wind that will blow you over. 
None of those are things that are prime conditions for nudity. And nobody's there to throw you any beads either. Sorry. But wait, there's more naked bullshit. And I'm pretty sure our favorite substance was involved. Just just for process of elimination. Pepsi. I spent a lot of time in Lowe's and Ace Hardware and, and other because I, I buy stuff to for my projects for working around the house. I like doing and building stuff. So the idea that this could happen in a Lowe's is sort of like for me, it's like the idea this this is like happening in my grandma's house or something. It's that, it's that level of, of visceral response from me. Man undressed in Lowe's, fearing bomb in his pants. Bro, the cashier doesn't want to date you, no matter what clever pickup line you try. <laughs> when a naked man was spotted Sunday running through Lowe's Home Improvement, this is called Greenwood Police, Calvin Lamont Cooper III, 38, was arrested Sunday and charged with indecent exposure. When officers arrived, they reported finding the man standing outside at a flower display wearing only a towel to cover himself. He told police he thought he was being followed by people who were threatening to kill him. He told police he was hiding behind a post when he heard his pants begin to beep and thought someone had planted a bomb in his clothes. So he removed all his clothing. All of it, not just the pants, mind you. He, he, he... Here's another. Okay. Here's another wild tangent. Fallout video game, Fallout Three. Mm -hmm. There's a horrible, hilarious thing you can do in this game. If you have a grenade and you sneak, and you sneak up behind someone and you pickpocket them, steal their shit. You can take something out of their inventory and leave the grenade and then you walk can away. Indiana Jones it? And they will fucking explode. And do you know why that works, Tara? Because it's a fucking video game and not real <laughs> life. <laughs> and you gotta look at that mugshot. That that is that is yep. This 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 says to me this is this is giving me meth vibes. Yeah. Cuz I I still to this I remember that episode of uh Breaking Bad where uh Jesse's trying to get in the house or get the money back and shit from the meth heads the the meth back from the meth heads. So in order to do this he goes out in the front yard and starts digging and the meth head comes to see what he's doing. <laughs> and he convinces the meth head to start digging with him. That's math. That's fucking math. In your pants. I, there gotta be easier ways to kill somebody. Right? Than to follow them to Lowe's and put a bomb in their pants at Lowe's. No, this is you. This is you taking the drug that fucks with you to the point you think your goddamn iPhone is about to explode. So you disrobe. We have D Dan now wears a blood sugar monitor that has an app on his phone. And if his blood sugar gets above 200, it makes a sound that sounds kind of just like our smoke alarm. And loud. Real loud. And, and you I can't, can't stop. It. You can't shut it off or turn down the volume. So like <laughs> if his blood sugar gets above 200, every cat in the house has a panic attack. <laughs> Because they think the smoke detector's <laughs> gone off. Which is real fun when Mr. Bitey snuggled up to me. <sighs> so, like, it's possible that your pants could randomly start beeping, but it's probably not a bomb. Probably like, not. thank God he has not taken to just completely disrobing in places when that goes off. <laughs> <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah. Uh, next up... It's Florida. Um, I have been fired before. We've all been fired. I can ask, I can easily say that because this is this is the 21st century and we are fucking disposable. 
Um, I have been fired for reasons I felt were unfair. And I'll be honest, once or twice, yeah, I actually did it. <laughs> um, even then, whenever I've been fired, I kind of just take my lumps and I'm like, well, I'm done. Goodbye. I'm heading home. Bye. This is not my response. Because it's a bad response. Florida woman rampaged employer's computer system after getting fired. Florida woman deleted thousands of company records and wrote prof profanities in her employer's computer system after she was fired from her position as head of human resources. The head of HR. Uh, how do I? Uh, Me I think it's Megan Kalam. It's probably Megan. Yeah, it's M E D G Y N E. That's Meg. That spells Megan. Megan Kalange. I think that's Kalange. That's Kalange. Yeah. Megan Kalange was found guilty of one count of intentionally causing damage to a protected computer, one count of accessing a protected computer, and recklessly causing damage. Kalange, 41, worked in St. Petersburg, Florida for a Manhattan based company, which was not named. She was fired for failing to meet the minimum requirements of the job she was hired for. In one instance, she downgraded an employee's access to a computer system after an argument. So she petty. We already know this. After she was fired, but before she was escorted from the building, two employees saw her, two employees saw her repeatedly hitting the delete key on her computer. Blanche later access, logged into the computer system, and for two days rampaged the system, deleting 17,000 job applications and resumes and leaving profane messages in the system. The one time I was fired from a job where I worked at a computer, mm -hmm. when I came in that day, they had unplugged my computer specifically to avoid a situation like, not that I would have done it, because I wouldn't, but just like as a security measure, I did not have access to my computer. And even more, they let they didn't take her her login credentials apparently out of the system because she's logging in from home, just writing dicks, 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 delete, delete, dicks, dicks, dicks. And this delete. was like a small ten person company with no HR department that was run like shit, and they knew that. This was the HR department. Like, <laughs> someone at IT is getting fired next. Maybe. <sighs> if they can find his records. <laughs> they can find fucking anything. Um, the computer like, that's 101! Company spent two years on $100,000 complete creating computer systems she wiped. The company spent another 100000 investigating and rebuilding it. The company never fully recovered the data. How do you think? And you know, you know, miss, you know what's worse than being fired? Being fired and incarcerated. Yeah, how, how is and this gonna, or sued. How was this going to work? Did they think they, that they wouldn't figure it out? If you log into the system, they know what you do. It feels like a game of someone who thinks they have nothing to lose and doesn't understand just how much they still have to lose. Like, fuck it, they fired me, whatever. What are they going to do, put me in jail? Out... Yeah. Then you find out that's illegal. Yeah. It's... Yes. That's not hacking, and this is, this is the funny thing. Up until recently, the Supreme Court made a ruling on this, but it still kind of stands, that it's not retroactive. Even if you have a login and a password, up until that Supreme Court ruling, if you accessed a computer and did something specifically you were not supposed to do, that was considered hacking. And that was a criminal, yeah. Even if you had access so to the So if you're sitting at your job, like, trolling Twitter? No, if you, uh, log, like, uh, a famous case was log into a, uh, a research uh, paper database and make them available free for download for people. Um, even though, you know, you have access, you're allowed to do that. Well, you start downloading a whole bunch uh, of stuff. 
you're acting the way they didn't intend you to do it. You're supposed to. You're supposed actually, to know. I actually have a relevant story you'll like, Nash. Oh, dear. years ago I was working for Sprint when they were first doing voice over IP technology, and I was I was a a supervisor leading a team of technicians installing the first VOIP in Kansas City, and the hubs were huge. They looked like a PC, and they basically kept telling us that they had an internal firewall that would keep anybody out and keep people from hacking into them. And I told them like we looked at it and like. I don't see it. And I was working for a company that was working for Sprint. So they just kept telling us, yeah, it's there. You just have to believe it. So one night, my personal computer at home, I hacked into a, one of the people we had just installed. I just like opened the port and walked into this router and started taking images of the lawyer who we had just installed that day, his computer. And I took them back to my, my bosses and went, tell me the firewall exists. And they went, We'll take care of this. Also, never do that again. <laughs> so you pulled a live free or die hard. Yeah. At your job. Yeah. I was younger and much stupider. <laughs> That's the problem with authority thing that we've talked yeah. about. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, that, that, that definitely hacking. <laughs> so <laughs> my husband, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> no, he's never been in prison. Why do you ask? <laughs> Statute of limitations is over on that one too. So. <laughs> Speaking of spouses and statues of limitations. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, oh no. This one comes from Tennessee. <laughs> I say this a lot on the show. We've all at one point or time, another in our lives had a bad breakup. Shit's not gone well. We've not been happy. They've not been happy. Things have not turned out well. Emotions kind of high. Well, Kind of nuts. Sometimes also kind of high. However, this has never, never been my go-to move, or even even on the 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 the, the, the very fringes of what would be considered a good plan. For obvious fucking reasons, former Oak Ridge nurse pleads guilty to mailing feces and blood. To husband's ex-wife. Former Oak Ridge what? nurse, like guilty to mailing packages containing feces and blood to her husband's former wife. Ellen Marie Gibson, 37, pled guilty Monday to two counts of sending biohazardous material through the state mail. She was sentenced to two years of probation. No. Prosecutors say Gibson sent packages containing feces and Dale's days later mailed a feminine napkin with blood on it that she obtained from a patient. So, like, not even her own. She's also banned from obtaining her job in the healthcare field involving direct contact with patents. No shit. Look. His ex might be all kinds of just upping your shit and making you miserable legal shit whatever bad relationships everyone deals with them i yo i've even had uh so's uh pissed off at my exes because of the shit they put me through um and yet yeah, none of them have been like okay now we start mailing shit no like if you're if you're his wife, mm -hmm. I, I, ha I don't I don't have extensive experience with divorce, thank God, but I have been divorced and it took me a year and there weren't a shit ton of assets to divide. Divorce is a long process. Mm -hmm. So if you if this dude is divorced and remarried, it has been a few years. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand if there are kids involved, you're stuck dealing with each other with custody and all that. But, like, it's time to start moving forward. You got to get past the anger part of the grieving process eventually. It, the, the article doesn't say where the shit came from. Uh, there's no part in the grieving process that's 
mailing shit, by the way. That's never okay. Whose shit was it? (laughs) Hi, Mrs. Like, I had an ex send me flowers. The worst thing, I had my ex send me flowers that happened to be lilies, and my sister's cat ate them and threw up a lot. Because lilies are poisonous to cats. That's probably the, and he didn't mean it. He wasn't trying to poison her cat. He was trying to do a nice thing, and he accidentally poisoned my sister's cat. And she wanted to have him murdered. (laughs) And I was like, I think that's a disproportionate response. Maybe I just tell him. Where where did the (laughs) shit? It's like, yeah, like where? I see you have a good night. Let me go and check that bedpan. I see you ate all the cheese I gave you last evening. Good, good. The fuck? And like, where were you keeping it for the rest of your shift? (laughs) Don't open my Tupperware. Don't fucking open it. Right? Like, was that like in the staff fridge? There are so many, so many different levels on which this this is is terrible. This is, this is Jesus Christ. Well, let's move on to just from this is almost it was Bridget. It was Bridget, guys. Bridget is fine. He did not. Bridget ate like one petal and she threw up a bunch of times. She's fine. It's OK. The, I promise. The, the, this is, next story, at least. This is a little more benign stupidity, I guess you kind of say. <sighs> Although it sure is fucking stupidity. Who the fuck does this? You ever had a storage unit? Yeah, I never have. I, I, I kind of have been under the impression that you're not really there to do much beyond just throw your shit in and leave. There's no reason to hang out. So you put in stuff or you take stuff out and you leave. So why the fuck do you need to set up some goddamn Yankee candle? Unattended candles lead to fire 165 thousand in damage at Herndon storage unit. Because they were illegally living there, maybe? No, That's not from the looks of it. No, nope, they weren't. There were no. Nope. Fire investigators say unattended candles inside a storage unit led to extensive damage Friday. Fire crews were dispatched after a passerby noticed smoke billowing inside one of the units. Investigators determined the fire was accidental. They say the cause of the blaze was lit candles being too close to combustibles. Three? Three exterior storage units sustained fire and smoke damage. No one was displaced because of the fire. No reported civilian or firefighter injuries. The last line of the story. There were no working fire alarms, smoke alarms in the building. Of course not. Who's there? Anyway. <laughs> That's just basic safety. Like, I don't know how you got away with that with fucking OSHA, but my question is, hmm. see, my, I, I have two things that that could be. One, they're illegally living there. Or hmm. two, there's something in there they don't want you to smell. Yeah. Or they were smoking weed and forgot to put the key. Yeah. <laughs> something in there they don't want you to smell. Right. Whether it be a body or drugs, what have you? You know, honestly, if I was walking by a storage unit and I smelled a nice, you know, spruce pine aroma, that would make me more suspicious, not less. (laughs) Yeah. Because when I did have a storage unit, it was when I was living with my sister and like, it was a pretty nice, well-run place. Like, so it never smelled like bad. But it smelled like concrete, like, you know, right. like it smelled yeah. like a brand new garage. Right. If, if I was if, if I was like walking by a storage unit area and I smelled a dead body, I'd be like, yeah, that seems right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the least but suspicious smelled, thing. But if you smelled like cucumber melon. Apple pie. Oh, somebody's up to mm. some shit. You, yeah. You're now on the hook for this because people had shits. This is that point where people who don't have their stuff itemized 
will be trying to make up all sorts of shit. Oh god, I didn't. In fact, I literally had loose clothes in my storage unit because I was trying to move a box of clothes in and the box fell apart. Like lost all structural integrity and in the snow and after i sat on the hand truck sobbing for 20 minutes because you know my life was falling apart and then a box of my clothes had literally fallen apart in the snow i just fucking carried the clothes in and threw them in there loose and wet because that seemed like a good idea at the time just fucking so, God forbid, like, if they asked me to itemize what was in there, I would have been like, I know there was a sofa. <laughs> I would be like, no, I had a 1952 Fender Telecaster. <laughs> <laughs> I, had I had the Ark of the Covenant. I had an original Atari 2600. I had a Clique of Vision. I had all the most valuable Digimon cards. But only the valuable ones. Only the valuable ones, none of the shitty ones. Yeah, Dan moved me out of that storage unit. He could tell you it was not well organized. And our last one this week, this is just, hey, you know, people, they go to bed, they think everything's fine, everything's good. They wake up the next day, car in your house. SUV crashes into home after police chase on Pittsburgh south side. During the chase, poor authorities say the driver went through two stop signs, hit multiple vehicles, and crashed into the home. A uh, home in Pittsburgh South, Pittsburgh's South Side was damaged after an SUV crashed into the kitchen Friday night following a police chase. The crash happened just before midnight near the intersection of 17th and Morton. Uh, authorities police say there was called to a two-vehicle accident. Uh, the bus operator told him the driver of the SUV seemed intoxicated. According to Port Authority Police, when officers got at the scene, the driver of the SUV attempted to flee, accelerated around the bus, struck a telephone pole head on. Now that's norm <laughs> <laughs> now that's normally just, the I just want you to picture in your head. Fuck this, I'm out of here. <laughs> now for most of us. That's the part where you're done. That's like, yeah, I, I, I can take a hint. Yeah, but not this, not Morton. I mean, not not this guy, not not this, not not our fellow here. Um, Tyler McDonough, Tyler McDonough, not Tyler McDonough of the clan no. McDonough. <laughs> <laughs> then he put his car in reverse, continued on the sidewalk and fled. Port Authority police pursued him during the chase. Police say the driver went through two stop signs, hit multiple vehicles, and crashed into the home. There were no reports of serious injuries. Thank fucking God. And the look on his face is just baffled. That is a baffled man. Is man. 23. <laughs> That's a rough 23, man. Damn. Right? Like, I know we try not to put make fun of people's appearances, but that man is half my age. <laughs> Um, Port Authority police pursued him during the chase. Yeah, uh, police say they found two unopened cans of beers, a Glock pistol, and one am magazine magazine with ammunition in the SUV. Charges against him gonna include fleeing or attempting to elude a police officer, accidents involving damage to unattended vehicles, property, criminal mischief, driving under the influence of alcohol, driving on the sidewalk, recklessly endangering another person, and not obeying stop signs. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like kind of not kind of burying the lead there on that one. Yeah. I. So, you know, you're, it's a Friday night. You're at home. You're in the kitchen. Maybe you're getting leftover slice of pizza or something. Just hanging out. And all of a fucking sudden SUV. Because I'm up late. And my 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 spot on the couch is right in front of our front window. Mm. So I would be an ex Tara. And then he would be an angry Dan. Yeah. It's. it's I uh, fucking. Just making shit worse. 
look, once just, you drive away from the cops and you immediately hit a thing, it's time to quit while you're behind. You're done. Anything you do the after the universe that, has decreed that you will not have a car chase today, and you got to listen to that. Everything you do after this point, it's just going to get worse. Yeah. But there is a point right there if you just stop and say, oh, "Okay, officer, I'm drunk. Yeah, I got booze. You know what? I fucked up. I got a gun. Let's go." The thing that I think people don't understand, even if you get away. Mm -hmm. Your car yeah. has a little thing on it that connects them back to you and your name and where you live. Mm -hmm. So even if you get away, they're going to come to your house. You are so dumb, they're going to find you, etc. Now I wonder where that guy is. <laughs> He had a reality show for a while. Yeah. Fuck, I need to go viral. Anyway, um, so just this is a thing that could happen. So I guess the first thing we learned this week, you can just be, you can be sitting in your house, minding your own fucking business. Suddenly, there's an idiot in your kitchen with his car. It's a new exciting thing for me to worry about at 2 a.m. Yep. Just when I'm just trying to watch old episodes of Fringe. Welcome to this is this is just a thing that can happen in your life through no fault of your own. Just ta da. Um, we have we've learned that if you smell something really good at a storage unit, there's some shit going down. Yeah, be suspicious of that. Call the authorities. Someone is dead. That's. Um, there's probably a body. We've learned unless it's your job to mail shit to in through the through the through, to some lab or something. Some people have this job. This is a job. You have to mail shit yeah. as part of your job. Well, I guess and now they have the little colon cancer things where you have to smear your own poop on the little index card and mail it back to them. You should only mail shit professionally. Yeah. You should only make, especially other people's shit. That should only be. Is that your career? Is it your career to mail other people's shit somewhere? No. Are you being paid? God, I shouldn't say that because there's probably someone. Who yeah, yeah, that's thorny. Yeah, because then we get into fetish territory and shit gets weird. Mm -hmm. Um, we've learned that. Yeah, you do. Know, We've learned that if you're angry at your employee and try to get back at them, using your own login and password is not a way to walk scot free. You, you're you fucking idiot. Um, and you do, in fact, have more to lose. We've learned that if you hear a beeping in your pants, you're probably just getting a text message from your bank offering you a credit card. Not yeah. an explosion. Or like a robocall that wants to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. How does that work? Who has ever gotten a fucking extended warranty on their fucking car? I have never, I have barely even had a real regular warranty on my fucking car. Fucking extended fucking. Who's? No. I think I've gotten that call from every state in the union. Yep. Me too. Me too. And finally, we've learned this week. We actually did learn this week. If the winds are powerful enough for a straw to penetrate a tree, imagine what that could do to your penis. I don't even have a penis, and I don't like that thought. This is why I don't go outdoor. <laughs> you used to call me Bob. Now they call me Cactus Dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's. Is that a is that a straw man argument? 